So hello, and as you're looking on the screen, you might get a hint if you live in the United States of what we're talking about today. We are talking about counters. Ah, 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 ah. And this is my friend, the count. But yeah, we're talking about counters in Alan Bradley PLC programming. And like timers, they work hand in hand. A uh, couple things to keep in mind. There's a couple things to keep in mind, but we're going to go through it. But I had to start off with a little bit of a joke because that's the way I am. And so now this is the basic setup for a, a setup for a count up countdown sequence. Just like timers, there is this own special command for counters. Um, CTU, no, I'm not talking about 24. You know, count up or CTD, which is count down. Um, embedded in those, you need to have, create your own special counter bit. And if you know how to create bits, I'm not going to go through this, but I'm going to look into my parameters and local tags. And I will look for, oh, that's a controller tag. There's my C1 right there. And what you can see is you can see all those right here. And a couple things to keep in mind with these different bits in the counter tag. Um, let me open my word pad. That way I can kind of explain and help you see some of the stuff. Oops. Um, so the accumulated bit is a dent. It works just like it works just like anything else. So I'm gonna zoom in. Like the accumulated bit on the timer, it's a dent. Keeps track of the current count. Track of current count. So we see the C, the CT, the CD bit. That only goes through when the a command goes to count down. It's a, it's a bool and goes uh, goes true when. You count down. That means the CU is exactly the opposite. It goes true when you count up. Uh, the done bit is a bool. And turns on when the preset equals the accumulated value. Now this is important to realize because if I if I don't set a preset value, the done bit turns on because my accumulated value will be zero. And it stays on if it goes above. So when it equals the preset equals a zero, that's when the done bit goes on. So the over is a bool. And th that goes true, true when you exceed the maximum value of a dent. When you exceed max value of a dent. So if, and that's like, like three million something 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 so you probably won't get it but this is like if it's over range it's not going to be over your your preset value it's just if you're outside the bounds of the, the the data type that you're using so this automatically defaults to a dent but let's say i'm working with a simple integer that's only can only hold in the eight bits 250 uh, 255 that would give an error if it goes to 256. But that OV bit will say if it's above 3 million something, 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 whatever, do the math, put all ones in 32 and then go to town, go to town. Um, I forget that number off the top of my head, but it's that's what you would look for. And I might, wait, I might have it here. Nope. So, okay. Um, 
a, and then that means an under bit is the opposite. Goes through when you go below the min value of a dent. So I can go positive or I go really low negative. It's like negative 3 million, something, 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 something. Um, that's what the value is. So I looked it up and I wanted to make sure I put this in here correctly. Um, so for overage, it's not 3 million, it's 2 million something. That's the, the if you put that value in, and then add one to it. It's going to go. It's going to give you the overbit. Now on the on the negative side, if you put that number in and go negative, it'll give you an underbit. Okay, so just keep that just keep that in mind as you are programming. Chances are, I'm pretty much only going to program with maybe accumulated my preset and my done. There's I, I can. I can't think of many uh, reasons why I would need to t keep track of this, but you might. I don't want to tell you not. But these are the three. I'm just going to put X there because, you know, those are the three that I want to program with. So let's go to our program. Okay. And this is what things look like. Now, you don't need to put a countdown in, and you don't need to put a count up in. You can always count down, you can always count up. It doesn't matter. But if you want to but if you want to count up a count down the same counter, then you need to use a count up command and a count down command with the same tag set up. And if you want to reset it back to zero, you always need to put a reset command in. So right now I have a push button so that when this goes through it's going to count up one. And it's important to note that it automatic once you push it once, even if you're holding it, it's only going to take one value up. So for those that know, there's automatically a one shot built in to the program. Okay, so just keep that in mind. There's automatically a one shot, or basically a one one that only allows one bit to go through one scan cycle. Um, so it doesn't. If if I hold it, it will just keep counting up. That's another example for another day. Um, same is true with the down. So just know once you press it, you have to let go of it and then press it again for it to register another count up. Okay? So it has to go true to false. That rung needs to go true to false. So whatever the values is. So it's a push button, photo eye, like start conditions. It has to go from true to false before it will register another count. So let's go online and see this. Okay? You can create it. You can go to your timer. You, if you, it creates just like a, a timer. So they're all up in the same timer function. But here's my up. Here's my down. If I, you know, I'm just going to toggle the bit, and you can see it goes up. And the, the count, the count is still up and it's done. And again, the count up stays up while this is on, kind of like your enable bit in your timer. Uh, if I toggle it, it's off, but the done stays on. If I count it again, everything's hunky dory. And you can see as I toggle the bit, it keeps counting up. Now, if I count down, you can see it's subtracting the accumulated value. And once I go and watch this, once I go net, it's zero equals zero, so the done bit's on. But once I go negative, notice what happens. The done bit is off. Now, if I try to count up right here, it's going to allow me to count up. Because it won't allow, this isn't going to override anything. So if if this is just basically, so if I so say I count up, and now I want to count, keep counting it up, but then a countdown shows up, it can give you, it's going to override to the whatever has transitioned from true to false, as you can see. Okay, I'm going to untitle this. Now, once I put a preset value in, notice what happens to the done bit. And five. The done bit turns off. And so now if I toggle up, and now it's done. And I can keep going till the moon in this. You know, I can just keep on going. Say I want to subtract one. You know, maybe it's a parts counter, everything's fine. 
But say if I'm at the end of the day, this is when I hit my reset on. Now, notice though, with the reset on, you'll notice that this accumulated value is not going up. It's staying the same because the reset bit is true. So that is something. Same with the down. So let me teach you a small little trick. I'm going to go offline, and I'm going to put a timer in. Okay? Let me put a timer in. T1. And I'm just going to say three seconds. I got to create the new tag. Here we go. New tag. Let's do three seconds. And I'm going to put a bit in here. And keep in mind, I can program off the done bit. So there's my counter done bit. And I am going to put in a I'll put in a timer one bit here to re basically reset itself. Okay. Two things I'm gonna put uh, I'm gonna turn this into a retentive timer. You'll see why not too long. And I'm going to then put the Okay, and when this count, I'm going to get rid of my done. I'm going to go ahead and make this the timer done bit to count up by one. And just to show you a light, you know, here, let's do it this way. So now this is going to time and reset itself up to three, you know, it's going to time three times, um, go through to the timer three times. I, I'm going to just do something basic like this. And then I'm going to put in a done bit to physically control a bit. So there we go. Now don't worry about that start. Say, you know, I'm just going to demonstrate something really fast. I'm going to download this. But I want, want you to notice that this is going to cycle through th three times. It's going to count up every three times. Once I go into run mode. Oh, it's done. I can't put a counter on there. Sorry. So now five. And it's, notice it keeps going up. Two. And notice every time that it keeps resetting itself because it's resetting itself down here. And now it's done. And now it's turning on a bit. Okay. So if I want, this is a good way to time and count something and count, count, count uh, combine the logic. And so now if I want to reset everything, I toggle the reset bit and go back to nor go back to start. And now it's one, two, th three, four. FYI, I'm going to turn this into a TON. And I'm going to delete this. And let me reset. It's still doing the same thing. It's dropping out. But sometimes I've, I've noticed with, with short scan cycles, if this is down further. So, for instance, 
if I move this down here, reset. You'll know it, it may sometimes may not count um, if it's on longer scan cycle because the 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 reset is right after this and it may not count. I've seen it happen, but just keep that in mind. Those are a couple of little tricks. If it works for you, great, but I have seen it happen in class where this doesn't work that way. So I have to use a, a reset, a retensive timer and uh, the reset just based upon the scan cycle. So, um, but that's how you can mesh a counter with a timer. And if I want to throw in a, if I want, if I can do is add a second timer. If I want, like, say I want a light to blink two different times. Change this to T2, add in a T1 done. And let's change this into because it's tracking the cycle. And now we can keep it on for on and off for three seconds if we do t1.tt. So I think we're startup. Okay, we're in startup mode. Everything's reset. I'm going to toggle my reset, but notice it's on for three seconds, off for three seconds, and then it resets and counts up. You can see all that. So this is a way of maybe tracking a cycle completely done, but I would always do it off the, the last time or done bit. And you can see it keeps counting up, but just keep this in mind. Um, these are a couple little tricks that you can do that may assist you. Okay. I hope this was helpful. And let me know if you have any questions in the lab.